Good evening, and welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Resurrection. Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins in your order of worship, or on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have Amen. mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by whose providence your servant, John the Baptist, was wonderfully born and sent to prepare the way of your Son, our Savior, by preaching repentance, make us so to follow his teaching and holy life, that we may truly repent according to his preaching and following his example, constantly speak the truth, boldly rebuke vice, and patiently suffer for the truth's sake. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, and the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. Then even ground shall become a level plain, and the rough places even. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord is spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Hence to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for the day is a portion of Psalm 85, found in your order of worship. Let's read it in unison. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day she came, or they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. 
and all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue was freed and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbors and all of these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered and said, What then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. Then his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant. The oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us, Give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's be seated. The nativity stories of the gospel are wonderful, and they can also leave us a little bit pondering. In the case of Jesus' birth, we meet both amazing humility and the miraculous. Along with mangers, we're told of angels and shepherds, wise men who come from afar and escape from the clutches of a power-hungry king. And then, aside from a small story from his youth, the gospels are silent. On the life and deeds of Jesus until he began his ministry well into adulthood. We aren't told of the years in between. And so too is the juxtaposition of the nativity of John the Baptist, the feast of which falls on the calendar of the church tomorrow. John's mother, Elizabeth, in the echoes of Sarah and Rebecca, Rachel and Hannah, has been childless well into old age and miraculously finds herself expecting. John's father, Zechariah, while serving as priest and offering incense in the temple, was visited by the angel Gabriel, who brought the news that the couple would soon be parents. But Zechariah doubted this could be, as both he and Elizabeth were getting on in years, and so for his doubt, he was rendered mute until it came to pass, the account of which we just read. And that strange gap from infancy to ministry is even named and defined in the telling of John's birth. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. While tradition has offered many suggestions of this in-between time of John being a member of the Essene community or of John and Jesus growing up one another as cousins, what it truly means for John to dwell in the wilderness until his public ministry and what his life and days were like are really left wholly to our imaginations. While we can only wonder at the events that may have unfolded there, the story, as Luke tells it, has already been set in motion. And John will eventually become to known as John the Baptist, pointing the way, making the path straight and preaching comfort to a broken world with the promise of the Messiah to come. From before his birth, his destiny as a prophet and a herald has been foretold. And so the details in the middle, well, while my mind and narrative greed might want to argue the art of the Gospels and for their good news, well, those details, they're not important. And certainly not for this part of the story nor to the promise of the light that will break into the world. As John himself will later say, he isn't the one the world has been waiting for. Or in another phrase from the Gospel of John, John the Baptist isn't the light, but the one who will point to the light, one who will help those who wait make their hearts and minds ready for 
the one who is to come. I find that I am incredibly grateful that I am not called like John from infancy or even later to be a prophet. But I think that each of us are in one way or another called to point to the light, to the peace, hope, and comfort that is the promise of the light of the world. So how will you point to the light? How will you guide your own feet or the feet of others into the way of peace? Amen. to page 358 or in your order of worship, please stand and join with me in reaffirming our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Through the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three, found on page 387, or in your order of worship. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. of your mercies look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help for you are gracious O lover of souls and to you we give glory father son and holy spirit now and forever amen continuing in your bulletin or turning to page 360 let us confess our sins against god and our neighbor Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. We stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, my friends. God, peace. Please be seated. Again, wonderful to see you all this evening. Welcome again to Holy Eucharist. A reminder, we're still receiving communion in the pre-packaged wafer and wine. So we'll line up in the aisle and then return to your seats to receive. Or if you prefer, you can kneel up front if that's more comfortable after um, you have the container. It's a little easier to open when you're sitting down rather than kneeling. So, but whatever you're comfortable with, you're welcome to do. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice. Holy Eucharist Prayer A begins in your order of worship. We're on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. We stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give no thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be to your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints to the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God, the people of God. Always. 